Hello and welcome to the 17th episode of the Boar Hat Tavern podcast, a podcast all about Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. I'm your host, Daz, and I'm joined today by the co-host of the podcast, Sandy Inovich. Today, we've got an interesting show for you. We're going to be talking about the new Excalibur Arthur that was just released on JP this week. And then we're also going to be unveiling Sandy's top 10 collab units list. Now, myself and Novich, we have no idea what units she's going to be talking about. So we'll open that up to debate. And I'm sure a bunch of people debated and chatting in the comments as well. So that should be fun. Then we're going to cap the show off with a round of Jeopardy. And I got some pretty fun questions, I think, lined up for Sandy and Novich in their ongoing battle for supremacy in the games category at the end of each show. But before we get into the show, Novich got a promotion in real life. Novich, what, what's going on here? You, you got a, a pay boost, a new job? What's going on? Yeah, you know, I got some new responsibilities. Um, a lot of challenges ahead, especially uh, uh, with the uh, coming out of the COVID pandemic. So, um, yeah, I mean, my workload um, is going to be a little busier. So I kind of like how we've been uh, doing the podcast on Tuesdays. Um, hopefully, if it works for you too, um, I would like to keep it this way. But, uh, yeah, so I've... I've it, it has affected my um, my uh, play time. Uh, I didn't do my guild boss this week, um, and that's probably the first time ever I've never I've missed it. Um, same with uh, I mean I was I've been checking in though checked into the guild checked in um, just to get the daily rewards for the event. Um, but um, I there was one day where I missed all my like dailies, and again that's pretty pretty big, you know, because it only takes less like what thirty minutes to do your dailies. <laughs> hey, when you've been playing the game for a year, you deserve a week or two off every once in a while. So it is what it is. How was, how was you saying? What have you been up to last week? Uh, just work. You know, it's it's, it's fun. It's exciting. I've been hosting uh, some proms at my location. But uh, speaking of which, you know, in the industry, I know Canada's Wonderland isn't open. So, Daz, you being from Canada, are you guys in a two-week more – lockdown <laughs> yeah i don't know canada's wonderland for those that for those that you don't know is like the one big theme park like six flags type thing that we have up in canada um it's the only one i've ever like really known um but yeah anyways uh, i'm assuming it's closed because we've been in lockdown for the past like month or so and they extend our lockdown for another couple couple weeks our numbers are in, with covid are trending in the right direction and i don't expect to go on too much longer and our vaccination rate slowly climbing up too so before you know it i think that we'll be uh, out of those woods i was actually watching <laughs> like how canadian is this i was watching a hockey game uh, last week. It was actually a Florida hockey game, Florida Panthers versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I saw people in the stands and I was like, oh man, like, you know, things are getting back to normal when you see spectators back in the stands at a hockey game. At least that's the, that's, that's the bar in Canada. That's the bar we set here. So yeah, yeah let's, uh, I'm, I'm getting off topic. You guys started getting me talking about hockey. That's, that's, that's problematic. I talk about that forever, but this isn't a hockey podcast. It's a seven lady listens podcast. So let's talk about the hot topic of the week. Excalibur Arthur. So he was dropped on JP this week and it was expected when, because he was leaked a while ago, like a long time ago. And people thought he was going to be the second anniversary for JP unit, which was uh, released on his festival, like as a, as a festival unit. Uh, I believe Goddess Liz was the first uh, year anniversary festival unit on JP. And Arthur was expected to be the second anniversary festival unit. The interesting thing is now that we know he isn't one, there's a lot of questions as to who it might be. Um, there's some speculation it might be Gother. There's been some stuff we know that he's the wheelchair Gother guy is somewhere in those game files too. So that'll be interesting to see. But we got the Arthur banner on JP and it was a kind of banner we haven't seen in a while, a step up banner, the kind that only costs 242 gems to do a full rotation. Oh man, how I've missed those. <laughs> so um, that's great news. Uh, hopefully we end up getting the similar banner on global, but we're catching up to JP. Who knows if they're going to do a catch up banner instead, just to kind of vault us ahead. Cause we're just keeping pace. We're not like really catching up like we were before. I feel like we're just kind of keeping pace to JP these days. So I'm a little bit concerned that that banner may end up being something a little bit different. Uh, maybe releasing multiple characters time, or maybe they'll even roll Arthur into another festival banner for us on global, just to make sure we can catch up. So I'm going to go over 
his kit very briefly because we're going to talk about it in more detail when he comes out on global and we'll open up the floor to thoughts so he's got two skills like everybody else in the game the first one's an aoe charge card very similar to lost fame meliotis and his second card which kind of finds him as a tank is a stance card it decreases the damage taken when he's when the stance is active it taunts and it reduces alt orbs from for anyone who attacks him so he also has a passive and this makes him a fairly interesting unit and potentially a very versatile one if all allies are humans he, they in, he increases the max hp of all allies by 30 percent and damage dealt to enemies by 20 percent. just note this isn't a backline ability you have to be in the front for this one to be active whoa there's a lot of stuff going on here sandy what are your initial thoughts on excalibur arthur I mean, I usually like units that can be on the back line so that you're not limited to only four on four um, type of content like, you know, Guild Wars. I can already see, you know, that magic buffer base for those of you who don't know, that's that's just going to increase it more. And I'm thinking of Roxy or any other, I guess, human. <laughs> that's, that's a little crazy. Um, he's useful, but I, I don't know how how strong he is that we can take him into PVP. But ultimately, I think I think he's a cool unit and he might come in handy. Um, and there's there's different content that we can play around with him on um, if it's four on four or just having him on the three on the field itself. Yeah, I fully agree. I think he will really shine in 4v4 content, whatever that content is. Maybe those weeks where we have 4v4 in PvP, which we haven't had in a while, or a lot of PvE contents 4v4 too. Um, so it'll be interesting, like maybe we'll be finding him useful on new guild bosses or even, on, I know final bosses don't have 4v4, but uh, even final bosses too, because boosting HP is usually an important metric. You usually use your Jillians or your Twigos to get that, that extra bonus points for like remaining HP, right? Well, now we've got a new unit that can do this. This might open up some new options. I know Sandy's itching to do new uh, guild boss videos. Maybe uh, Arthur will find his way into those. And uh, so, Novich, what do you think about like this? Like, it looks like they're maybe pushing a humans meta, or at least trying to. Um, do you think we're like there with Arthur, or do you think we still need more units to complement this kind of new human meta to make it really a thing? I, I think it's definitely the first step to that people have an option to kind of play around with different team setups. You said it in the right there in the beginning the the julian the mamaras uh the twigo those are all human and so you pair them up with arthur i mean uh, if you have excalibur arthur and twigo they're both red units you got to fill the other two spaces with red as well and you're going to get a huge hp boost um, i've seen videos of them pairing mamaras in the back the one and excalibur arthur i forget who the fourth one was but you know like the amount of hp the one had was ridiculous and he, um, he, he was just taking hits and hits and not dying. <laughs> I, I didn't even consider double dipping on the HP buff because, yeah, you're right. A lot of these HP boosters, well, I guess all of them are, are humans. So that does definitely open up a lot of potential options. Um, but I, I feel like in general, any sort of footage I've seen on Arthur, just people doing just kind of what you said, just kind of playing around with him. It doesn't seem like there's been any sort of OP comp that's kind of come out of this. Is it safe to say he's like a middling character, at least currently on JP? I mean, that's the way I kind of see it. Sandy, do you, do you think he's got more power than meets the eye? Is he a transformer or is he just what he seems to be? I think he's what he seems to be, honestly. And uh, the kind of one thing that I'm really interested in is like why did they make new cosmetics for him so you know we have so many arthurs and you can't use that so he's going to take more investment you know and him taking that slot again his passive or not being used uh, or not available if he's in the back line limits your choices you know i feel like if you're going to fill that slot you might as well do it with a, a meta changing you know person or a good support unit like gother or goddess liz who's who's more useful um, in that way. I think, I don't know, I'm, 
he's a cool unit to add to your box, but with the investment in the cosmetics and what he does, I think I might skip on that banner. I don't know. For only 242 gems, I mean, it seems like solid value. The other thing about his banner is that MK2 Valenti is on that banner as well. And I know a lot of people skip the MK2 Valenti banner. Not that she's necessarily meta. I know one of our guildmates today in our in our Discord was saying that he thinks that MK2 Valenti is kind of like the hidden gem in the current meta being a green unit um, that can actually do a lot of damage. But it feels like not a lot of people have Valenti just because a lot of people skipped on her in favor of you know the stronger banners that came after. Um, but yeah, I think I'll I think I'll definitely be pulling on this banner at least one rotation to get a copy of Arthur. And, Cross my fingers for that MK2 Valenti. Know what you think it's worth? Are you going to be summoning on this banner at all? Or is it skippable, like Sandy says? Yeah, I mean, uh, I like I said, I've been busy, but I did log into my JP account. I haven't been logging in every day on that one. But um, I ha already had gems saved up from from uh, like all the stuff that they give you on a weekly basis and just checking in. And so I pulled like three times so I was like 90 gems and I actually got the new Excalibur Arthur played around with it. It's fun, you know, on the PVE content. Um, like, like you mentioned, I was surprised cause I had, I had no preparation on how the banner was, but it is a step up. They do have the, the sale one gem pool. So that was kind of nice. So like, you know, only a couple in and I was like, so tempted to keep going because of the other people on the banner, like MK2 Valenti. So uh, that was, I, I didn't continue. Um, because I was like, I don't have the resources on my JP account to build her, but, um, I mainly wanted to see if I could play around with uh, Excalibur Arthur. Um, but it, it's nice to see that type of banner. Hopefully it comes to the global. I hope so too. Yeah, the, fi the final thing I'll leave everyone with too, one of the other downsides to Arthur is that you're, there are a lot of humans in the game, but you're also limiting the compositions that you can use to take advantage of his passive. You, like a lot of strong units aren't humans. Your goddess lives, go all the gothers, right? Um, so you do limit your creative options when you're trying to stylize your PVP team. So it's just also something to consider. But let's move along to one, one segment I've been extreme, like irrationally excited to go to and that's sandy's top 10 collabs unit list we've been the the top 10 lists we've been doing have been pr pretty well received and we've been doing them on off weeks uh, in terms of news and um before i've been the one curating these banners or not the banners sorry curating the lists but now we're flipping the script and sandy is going to be doing her top 10 list and me and Novage are the ones who are going to be surprised and shocked and awed with some of the decisions she makes so sandy tell us about your list so it was uh, it was hard. I uh, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Daz. Every week, <laughs> uh, are you finally going to give me a chance uh, that you'll participate in the games now? Since, nope. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I am the games host. <laughs> I, I I like writing the trivia. My Swiss cheese brain is not conducive to participating in the trivia. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I interrupted. I apologize. <laughs> No worries, but I had fun making this list. I mean, looking back, so this is top 10 collab units that I personally ranked, you know, and I'm, I'm curious to see what Daz and Novich has to say as well. Um, you know, of all the collab units that we've got, we had Attack on Titan, the Slime collab, Kingdom of Fighters, Stranger Things, and now we have the ReZero collab. So for me, starting off the list, okay, I think Milam. Um, she is an underrated unit <laughs> and I don't think many people have really used her in any content. I'm, I'm just very curious to see. I mean, she's a blue unit, right? Um, I'm just thinking she can be good for fat demon because her first skill, I mean, her skill, what is spike damage, two times crit damage. And then, um, you know, she's also disables alts. And she has an AOE uh, ultimate, and her passive increases crit damage by 8%, limit of 10 times, 80%. Do you think, I personally don't have her in my box, so I am just reading, I'm just excited. I think that's why she just belongs on top 10 for me. 
But yeah, Crick Gear, what do you think, Daz? You're you're shaking your head there. <laughs> can I can I fire you from the show? <laughs> Millum <laughs> on the list? I thought of all the characters, I wasn't expecting, to be honest with you, any slime collab characters to make the list, let alone Millum. I don't know. I've I've used Millum in my training cave. Um I don't like her at all, but that being said, I haven't really used her much outside of that. So I don't know. I'm I'm personally surprised that Millum made the cut, uh, but I'm interested to see who else because I mean, w there aren't a ton of collab characters, right? So you have to have some personal preference choices, especially near the bottom. Like, I mean, like maybe near the top, there's some that are obvious. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know about the Millum choice, but uh, maybe Novich disagrees with me. Uh, I actually have Milam. Um, I think at the time they probably didn't want the collab units to be overpowered. She, her base of all her attacks um, are a lot lower than, and then the average unit. She doesn't have as much cosmetics as the other units and the collab slime units do not have any UR options. So I think that's, what's hard. Um, to really see the potential um, from the gear, from being in geared, obviously for one. Um, but I mean, the 80% max crit damage would be nice. Um, I don't remember what her crit chance was. Um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, she's at 10. I'm hoping that, that Sandy has some other, uh, other characters, uh, you know, like from King of Fighters or even the, the Stranger Things or any of the newer ones. Uh, those characters seem to be a little bit more, uh, I guess top tiered compared to the older collab units. Um, I would say I agree with Daz though. The collab collab units are probably at the very bottom of all the collabs. It's a personal preference. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we're attacking you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the hot seat, Sandy. I she was cool. I mean, like her crit damage was 120. Yes, but her attack, her starting attack, is pretty high too. So I just, I just thought it was cool. And you can put her association with, you know, uh, Rimaru or the slime and she gets additional, like what, 23% crit damage. I personally like her. I think if I had her, I would utilize her or find a way to. <laughs> Not that it should really factor into it. Like well, maybe it should, but I'm pretty sure the slime characters are the only ones that don't have UR gear available in the game too. So not that that should be consideration, because like I, you, I feel like you should assume that maybe that'll come eventually. I don't know. Maybe it won't, but I think that's something that they'll hopefully correct their overlooking of that. But so who who's next on the list, Sandy? Uh, who's next? Okay, there's no more slime characters. I can tell you that. Okay. <laughs> What? No, ben, no, Ben Amaro didn't make the list? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, but number nine on my list, I think that Mikasa um, from the Attack on Titan, you know, her cards are really good. She has good damage output um, and her passive, you know, increases all stats of the hero by 3% of each ally that takes damage, um, limit of 10 times. So if you leave her alone, you know, for too long, um, she, she can really hurt your team. I know when Attack on Titan, that collab was around, you saw a lot of, uh, those metas and she's still pretty useful today in PVE content. But what do you think, Daz? Did I make a good choice now? She was, <laughs> on, she was on my list, which means that I, I agree. Um, yeah, no, no, she's, she's really annoying to deal with. I don't, I don't have her, but I remember facing her in PVP. Oh my gosh you have to attack her first or like get rid of her before she becomes an issue. And, and I thought she had a pretty cool character design in that. And uh, she can do a lot of damage and it, she draws the attention of the crowd. Right. And that's I think the makings of a good character, at least for PVP. Novich, do, do you agree with me, Casa? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she may have some new uses now, like we were talking about Excalibur Arthur you know, throw her with the one, she's blue, throw Mamoraz in there. She's going to get a huge boost of HP, be harder to kill. <laughs> and and uh, at that time, you know, the one will be gaining his stat boost every turn as well. Like, who do you kill? You know, and then you have Arthur taunting. I don't know. Could be an interesting team. I like it. I like it. Maybe she belongs lower in the list or higher in my list. <laughs> um, next, I have Jim Hopper as number eight. Uh, I think he's, he's a really cool unit. Um, I do have him. 
but his passive is the one that's just kind of it's toxic because <laughs> it's just there automatically where you know that direct hit and then it also becomes poisoned it's i, I think he's a great unit um that's being utilized right now in, in guild wars and i think is that a unit you think we should be investing on daz well, if you didn't buy his cosmetics, you might have missed the boat there, Sandy. I know you didn't pick up the cosmetics on him. We were talking about that earlier. But um, no, I, I think Hopper's a great person out on this list. To be honest with you, I'd probably even put him a lot higher. I think there's argument for that too because uh, he does have a lot of future flexibility as well and giving that bonus damage to all collab units, collab units that have existed since the slime collab into collab units that will be coming out five years from now. So... Uh, Hopper, and then not to mention his kid has a lot of control in it too. So I, I really like Hopper. He's one of my favorite collab units in terms of usability. So he definitely is, has a worthy spot on the list. He does. I like seeing him in his little cop outfit running around. <laughs> do you have Hopper, Novich? Is he number eight to you? I, I do. Um, I think he's a great collab unit. And as that says, he has use down the road and, you know, any other collabs down the road, he probably has a place on that team. So, I mean, I, I would have probably put him higher on my list. I'm, I'm kind of interested in what, uh, I'm curious about what the, the rest of the list looks like now at this point. I feel like I'm going, maybe it's not the individual heroes, but now looking at my list, it's, it's as if I'm ranking the collabs itself because my characters kind of go in order. So leading into number seven, uh, that's kind of funny because that was our last uh, one of our two episodes ago, Daz. He said seven days of 11. <laughs> <laughs> so she's number seven on my list. And it's it's 11. You know, she, she does really good damage. Um, she increases the hero's damage dealt against enemies by 40%. I mean, that 40% paired with Hopper, she, she does a lot. Um, and you know she's she's a human. So do you think she she can be? Is she a human? Am I that? Am I right? Am I just making that up she's right now? Sorry. Definitely a human child. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was actually watching some footage. I think it was Seaton was was trying Eleven Hopper and the new Arthur on J. Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So uh, she definitely works on like a human's team and she can do a lot of damage. I like Eleven a lot. Again, I'd probably put her higher on the list, which makes it, you t you t you've crossed off two uh, characters that I probably would have in the top like three or four. So I am really interested who you, who you got at the top now, Sandy, because uh, those are some pretty, that's a lot of power on, on the, the lower half of your list. I agree with Daz. I would probably have her in the top five, maybe top three, but uh, I, I, I'm kind of guessing your top five could be more of a personal choice than <laughs> than the majority, uh, um, what would the majority would select. Everyone's a critic, eh, Sandy? <laughs> I know. This is fun. I can't wait to see the comments. <laughs> All right. So moving on now, you know, that was Stranger Things collab. <laughs> Number six on my list would be Ram. Ram, that's the blue, uh, red hair um, sister. And the reason I just choose her, I mean, her, now with the unknown uh, racist meta, having her passive of increasing their basic stats by 20%, is really nifty. And I love it again when the passives work on the back line. And we talked about this like last episode, right? Daz saying that she's not useless when she pops out. So she has a stun card. She does have, you know, uh, it's, it's just very, very efficient. I've gone against her and that baby Merlin meta we were talking about, and it is hard. I, you know, we talked about who should you attack first and I sure tell you that 30 seconds makes <laughs> makes all the difference. And uh, if you don't you don't get her off the field or when she does pop in, they're just doing max damage. So for me, Ram is number six, red haired maid. <laughs> yeah. Ram, Ram is a no brainer upon the list. She's very similar to Hopper, like you said, in terms of her passive and amplifying other characters as a support and just the fact that she's on probably the strongest PvP team right now, the Ad Unknown team. I think she just she's well deserving to be on this list. Yeah, and you know, I having agree. Ram. You like Ram, Novich? 
Yeah, no, I think she's a great unit. We all got her for free. I mean, you can't complain about that. I think uh, definitely uh, uh, it, it's great for the free-to-play community. Um, I'm sure that um, units that are that show that they have potential or use is, is, is better than getting a unit that, hey, I got a, you know, I think when we all joined the game, we got like the free blue Tavern Meliodas, which I rarely use. Or, um, but uh, I think that they're getting better at the collabs. You know how we got Jim Hopper for free. We got her for free. I'm hoping in the future collabs, they continue that trend. Uh, Cause uh, I mean, it, it kind of makes the game experience uh, fun in a sense. You're not, you're not forcing yourself to pull if you, if you really need to, or um, at least you get something from the collab um, and you're not missing out. Okay. Good comments. Good comments on that one, at least. <laughs> so moving on, having Ram, you can't forget about her sister, Rem, her twin sister, Rem. <laughs> so Rem is number five on my list. Um, maybe not per personal preference, but personal experience. I haven't leveled mine, but I have went against uh, Rem. That's the blue haired maid. And um, her, you know, alt control is, is uh, I mean, sorry, decreasing that ultimate move is really nifty. Um, and uh, her AOE alt to me, she does, she does a lot of damage with Ram on the back line um, with Amelia and of course, baby Merlin. Uh, that meta just, it's, it's really hard to beat. And, you know, I'm still using the one, I'm still using um, Gother. And it's just, you, you got to really have high damage to take them out. And do you take out baby Merlin? But Rem, she, she's a very good addition to the team. And I, I think she belongs on my number five. <laughs> she packs a yes. punch. She packs a punch. And she's also probably the most liked character in terms of like the actual ReZero, not necessarily like the best unit from the ReZero collab, but uh, the most favorite character from the anime. Um, so I, I definitely think her and her sister, the other maid, are uh, not necessarily interchangeable, but I th I th you're comparing tomatoes and oranges here, but they both are very strong and have like definitely good uses. Yeah, Re uh, Rem, I like her a lot. She takes a little bit to ramp up and you gotta be a little smart with her when you play with her and play against her too. And I like units that make you think. It's definitely, I don't think you'll ever hear people using the term glue eater when, when you're using Rem. So there's always that. Have you fought against her in Novich? I mean, her self buffing also works. Yes, uh, I have. And um, I, you know, when you, um, I, I haven't loved her fully, but you know, when you do like her passive quest, uh, she, she seems to definitely have some potential. Um, she's definitely not a, a, a Mike from Stranger Things a collab unit. She, she's definitely a, her kid is, is uh, I mean, if you had the opportunity already to get her, uh, she's definitely a useful unit. The self buffing uh, and easily just moving your orbs and combining, you 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 get so many buffs. Um, so it's a it's a great unit. So yeah, definitely uh, I'm glad she's on the list. <laughs> you gotta stop the Mike hate, Novich. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you bring it up every episode. Just subtly, you're like, yeah, it's, she's no Mike. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Mike. Poor Mike Wheeler. Oh, man. Good thing I don't have Mike on the list. <laughs> but now just moving on to number four. Again, this is another ReZero character. Number four on my list is Amelia. Um, you know, all of us were really excited. We all said we wanted her 6-6. Six, six. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice today. Um, and that she's going to be useful for that new season four of Guild Boss that's coming. But her having not only like orb gauge control, but then she has a freeze card that can just immobilize you. But not even having to use her freeze card, if you attack her twice, you automatic automatically get frozen for two turns. So she is really hard to navigate around. And then her, a her AOE alt um is a secret technique so similar to lost vein so if you've got her six six that damage output you just hoard a couple of cards you got three or four that's a guaranteed kill um you know in, in pvp so maybe maybe she belongs a little bit higher it was questionable um but you'll see why because my next character could that character have been number four and maybe amelia number three 
but she she's there. She she's on my top my top three or four. <laughs> yeah, if I made a list, I think I'd put Amelia at the top. That's some personal bias, and I also think it comes with a caveat that you have to heavily invest in her and get her to six six to do that. But oh man, is she ever a great character? And there are a lot of other great collab characters. So interesting to see who you've got in your top three. Definitely a great unit. Um, probably would have put her higher. I'm not sure if she would have been my number one choice. I think, uh, I'll, like, uh, excluding Sly, uh, Attack on Titan and King of Fighter collabs, I think they've had more time in the game. So we've kind of seen the uses of them, and whether in Final Boss, Guild Bosses, or uh, a lot of other PvE content, that they may seem more appealing to be on a higher on the list. I think maybe the Stranger Things and as well as the uh, ReZero collab units, um, they probably still have more potential that we just haven't tapped into yet. And so uh, she probably could be higher um, as well. I mean, Daz has already said that she'll be number one. I definitely think that she could be higher, but um, as things come out or as people start discovering, you know, another final boss round of, you know, Final boss, Deanne comes back. Final when it, when they do the rotation, come back. You you may be surprised. Some of these collab units may be actually the better better unit to use, and you'll get higher scores, and then they start becoming more of a a, a a valuable unit. True. Well, she'll move up. She'll move up on my list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to your guns, Sandy. Stand by your list. It's your list. Don't let anyone my else list. change your mind. <laughs> Don't let anyone change your mind. You're good. Thank you, Daz. <laughs> so number three on my list is Athena. Um, you know, I don't. I personally don't have her. I'm really, really upset that I didn't continue on the Kingdom Fighters uh, collab because she's a very underappreciated unit, you know, that works well in PvE content like Brawl or Guild Wars because um, she controls that alt gauge, you know, and her detonate card also works super well if it's used correctly. You know, she does more damage the more orbs um, that the enemy has on. And, you know, if you pair her with mono um, as an association, you get an HP boost. So survivability for her. And then I know I fought against her in Guild Wars and it's, it's a pretty hard navigation. So I think she's number three because I think a lot of people don't have her myself included, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not speaking for everyone, um, but those who have her, uh, it's, it's definitely worth it. So that's why I was like, maybe she's number four and Amelia could move number three. <laughs> no, she's definitely deserving to be high up on the list. I, one of my biggest mistakes ever in this game was doing my one rotation on the Kingdom of Fighters banner and picking my over Athena. And I didn't have either of them at that point. I remember it being a bit of a, which one should I choose? I chose mine. I think I chose wrong. <laughs> uh, Cause like you said, Athena, I don't think a lot of people realize at the time how powerful she is. She's used on the top brawl teams. Like you said, she's using top uh, Guild Wars content. And even in the sub slot, you still see her in a lot of PVP content as well. So, oh, I wish I had her. And I, uh, she's the reason that I hope collabs come back and she's the reason that now I try and make sure I get one of each collab character from now on because I don't want to have that character I missed out on. Novich, what do you think? Athena? Uh, a great unit for PV, PVE content or brawl if you consider PVP or PVE. Uh, definitely a great unit. Um, personally, I probably would have put her different in the list. Um, it's funny how Daz mentions uh, my, um, I probably would have had my on the list instead of Villain. Because <laughs> um, it just, she has that Amplify damage AOE that, you know, I, I don't remember who else has that. I think she may be one of very few or the only unit that has that. But um, yeah, no, uh, Athena is, is probably definitely on the, on the, on the top 10. All right, so we're finishing it off with Kingdom Fighter collab characters. Top two, number two on my list is Rugal. <laughs> um, he's, he's a good unit if you really invest on him on the Pierce. He does well on Pierce team. Um, you know, we use him for our um, Guild Wars Pierce team. He's, he's a great unit. His passive, you know, 
um, removes the hero's debuffs, fully heals their HP, and increases all stats by 15% when the hero survives uh, with 50% HP or less. Like he, he kind of just saves himself, <laughs> you know. And you pair him with Lilia or BDM or, you know, a new Pierce meta. He, he can do some, some, some big damage, um, AOE damage, and take down your team. It's a good, um, it's a good tactic. It scares me. <laughs> still to this day when I, I face Pierce teams is that, you know, two AOE cards, even from him, that's just going to take you down. And then you start making wrong choices because you're a little freaked out that you might be wiped. So for me, a number two is, is Rugal. Yeah. Rugal. He, he brought Pierce back to a respectable spot and in a lot of cases supplanted or complemented depending on the composition, uh, Pluteum Meliodas. Uh, Lilia, Rugal, they're both humans too. So now you can do like a human pierce thing, especially when you get into more 4e4 content, it opens the doors potentially, maybe even for like your hoppers and your your festival Arthurs, not festival, Excalibur Arthurs too. I think there's going to be some interesting combinations coming out with Pierce down the road. I know Pierce isn't something you see a ton of in PvP, but it is stuff that you see in Guild Wars or some other content, like even on some final bosses or or Guild bosses too, for like kind of easy to play strats. So I like I like having Rugal up high. I think he's he's always going to be relevant, at least in the in the near future for uh anytime you consider pierce he's got to be the first character you talk about on that composition i agree i, I think uh rugel top five probably placed in top three is a good choice he he has um definitely as dad said uh brought life to the pierce meta again and uh, he, again he's human so with excalibur arthur you know you may see some interesting uh team combinations um, put together using him. So I, I definitely, uh, um, I, I like where you placed them for now. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to, you know, it's your own personal list, but uh, um, he's a great unit. I enjoy using him myself. Yeah, it's my personal list. You know, uh, Daz wants Collab to come back for Athena. I want Collabs to come back so I can get Milam. <laughs> <laughs> So I will end off my list. Number one of the top 10 collab units has to be Keo. Keo is just, I think he just belongs on the top three list. He, you can pair him with almost any meta personally um, because of his passive, you know, adding those two ignite effects. And a lot of times in PVP, you know, not everybody is bringing a healer or somebody who can cleanse that off. So the longer the fight goes on, and if you have a, a person who taunts, you know, like Blue Dairy, right, Novich? I know you were using that, and I myself have been using it, and Keel just stays alive. You've got the one for damage output, and it, it just, those things add up, <laughs> you know, and the 5% damage dealt. I mean, if you they've got like five or six on there, that's 35%, 40% damage dealt. Um yeah, <laughs> having all of those debuffs and they're guaranteed debuffs also enables a lot of other characters to do their things as well. Uh, you don't see a lot of them, but Mon Speed, for instance, does extra damage to ignited characters. You've got a lot of weak point characters out there. Um, it's just it's just something that's amazing to be able to have. Not to mention that a lot of people don't realize too that Keo, the more ignites that are out there, the less damage your your characters take so it's actually a bit of a tanky tactic as well tossing a keo onto the field whenever keo's out there too he's always the primary target because i'm just like i can't let these stack up so i gotta kill that keo um yeah he's an extraordinarily powerful character and yeah maybe he's not always in the meta for for P pvp and like it's the top pvp comps but he's used in a lot of places and i think you'll see him used down the road quite a bit as well because of his unique passive and just how strong it can be. Favorite for you, Novich? <laughs> I'm processing. I think I probably would put Keo as number one as well. I mean, there's so many great units, obviously. Um, I, 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 I mean, support units are always great. Um, you know, it's just a, uh, uh, Keo, I feel that he, he so people have used him on attack defense or attack crit or, you know, or HP defense, you know, uh, and he's been useful both ways, you know, um, 
some people want to keep them alive longer. So his, his uh, debuffs continue going on. Some people utilize him as, you know, your key damage person because he does extra damage when people have ignite on. So he's, he's, he's a great unit. And uh, I mean, the, what is it? Jim Hopper, you know, at, just amplifying his damage more. So great that he's at number one. Um, he's, He's a, a great unit. I mean, for a short period of time, I had him as my avatar in the game. So yeah, he's, he's one of my favorite collab units as well. <laughs> Keo fan club. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, his alt too, Daz. Like the reason I just choose him and I try to use him so much is that even though his alt is against one enemy, he ho- he applies two ignites on all enemies after he ults. And it's like, that's kind of secretive. They just put it in there if you read it. <laughs> Yeah, I love how much red you see above all the characters after you use one of his ults and all those passive stacks start adding up. Great list though, Sandy. Don't let the haters affect you because there's always haters. There's always people with different opinions. Myself and Novage are, might have been a little critical at some points, but this is your list and it's your list for a reason because it's the 10, top 10 collab units for you. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. But I think it was a great list. Uh, and if you think or you don't think, toss them in the comments. Let us know. Tear it apart. Maybe, you know, agree with it. Agree with that Millen pick at number 10. That's the that's the controversial one. But uh, we're getting near to the end of the show, but before we do the game segment, we always like to go over our featured comment for the week. And Sandy, this is you. Yes, featured comment. Uh, today, I'm actually going to feature two comments. Um, you know, wherever you leave it for us, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube. Um, one, The first comment I want to mention is just a funny one. Uh, for those of you who watch all of our podcasts, as soon as we post them, <laughs> this one came from Tushar Akaria. And it was on our episode 16, where we did an oopsie. That episode, like we said, you know, every episode, episode we're allowed one mistake. <laughs> and the upload process was of that. And Tushar said, I think you guys posted the wrong video. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that that was a good laugh. Thank you for looking out for us, you know. <laughs> Jazz? <laughs> Thanks for putting that on the group. It was actually my fault, but <laughs> yeah. So it's the, it's the second comment there, Sandy. Oh, second comment, you know, um, comes from also on YouTube, Carnage Magneto. Um, he's been, he's been a loyal follower as well. Uh, Carnage says, funny joke, Daz. Thank you for all your thoughts on the new collab units. I think they should have made Subaru or Petaljuice a unit for in-game play, but that's just me. And that's from Carnage Magneto. I don't think that's just you. <laughs> you. You glazed over the most important part of the comment. Funny joke, Daz. I have no idea what joke he's talking about, but I'm hoping he just means all of them because I'm hilarious. But um, <laughs> thanks thanks for that, Carnage. But yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people were shocked there was no Subaru um, in the game considering he's the, the protagonist of ReZero. So shocking not seeing him there. You guys... Uh, Ready for a little Jeopardy, though? I think it's about that. I think it's about that time. So, for those of you who don't know, at the end of every episode, we like to do some sort of game to make things a little fun. And occasionally, we do a Jeopardy style game with two categories. The two categories for today are: someone needs a haircut. Now. You can probably imagine what those answers are going to be revolving around hairstyles, hairdos. What 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 can you say about those? And uh, the other category is going to be long day at the office. So that has to do with people's vocations. So we've got point totals of 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. I'd like to have the answers in the form of a question, a la Jeopardy. If you answer them wrong, you get negative points. Once we're done clearing the two categories, we'll do final Jeopardy as well, where Sandy and Novich can wager any amount that they have already banked in their bank. Uh, and if they get the last final Jeopardy question right, they double it. And if they get it wrong, they lose whatever amount they wagered. So let's start off with Sandy. Where are you going to go for first? Control the board's yours. Control of the board. Let's do someone needs a haircut for 600. 600, right in the middle. This, char- this character supports the widest... 
Oh my gosh, I gotta start that again. This character sports the widest variety of hairstyles, from buns, ponytails, side ponytails, bobs, updos, and downdos. But she's most famous for her pigtails. Novich, I saw you buzz in, bud. Who is that? Who is uh, Deanne? That's correct. And I had to Google female hairstyles to get all the names properly selected for the kind of styles she had. I probably missed a few too, or maybe said something correctly, but hey, I tried my hardest. Okay, so Novich, you've controlled the board. Let's go for a long day at the office for 600. Day at the office for 600. Merlin can be a demanding boss. These two of her apprentices ended up turning against her. Sandy, that doesn't look like a confident buzz in, but it's a buzz nevertheless. Who are the apprentices? Uh, who is Vivian? The two, and... two apprentices. Need the other one. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, I'm brain farting. Oh, I have to give it up. Uh oh, that's, oh. A, that's a negative 600 for you. Nova, are you going for the steal? Yes. Uh, who is... Vivian, and who is Lilia? That is correct. Vivian and Lilia. Novage, you've got $1,200 or points. And Sandy, you're at negative 600. Okay, Novage, you still have control of the board. Sandy, you got a bit of a hole to dig yourself out of here. Let's go with uh, someone needs a haircut uh, for 800 Someone needs a haircut for 800. This character has two hairs that always stick up out of place, no matter how much product he uses. Novage. Who is Meliodas? That is correct. Good old Meliodas. And those two pieces of hair drive me nuts. I don't know what it is about it, but that's one thing I wish they'd change. Okay. Nova, you self-control, and you're running away with it here. Sandy, you better pull up your socks. Uh, uh, let's go with uh, Long Day at the Office for 800 Long Day at the Office for 800 This is the proprietor of My Sweet Gluttony, who really should consider relocating. Yes, Sandy. Who is Skinny Escanor? We would have taken just Escanor, but Skinny Escanor <laughs> definitely works to bring you out of the hole. You now have two hundred dollars or points, Sandy, and you also control the board. I think you are muted, which makes it really difficult to know which question you want me to ask. <laughs> Let's do uh, "Who Needs a Haircut" at eight hundred. Is that still available? That has already been taken. We've got somebody needs oh. a haircut for 200, 400, and 1,000, and long day of the office for 200, 400, and 1,000. So. Okay, let's do the haircut for 1,000. Haircut for 1,000. This character is the only one in the game that never needs a haircut. He doesn't have any hair. Sandy. Oh, man. Uh, who is Hawk? That's correct. Yes. I knew you'd get that one. That was a Sandy focused question. Sandy, you're catching up. It's 2000 for Novich, 1200 for Sandy. You've got control of the board. Let's keep going with the haircuts. The last one is 400. We've got 400 and 200. So we'll go to 400. Yes. This character better have a good barber. Whenever he gets a haircut, he needs to get cut three times. It'll become obvious as soon as you realize who it is. But I was wondering if this one would stump you guys. Oh, Nova just thinks he knows it. Who is Tarmiel? That's correct. The three-headed angel Tarmiel puts you further ahead in the lead with 2,400. So, Nova, we've got someone needs a haircut for 200 or long day at the office for 200, 400, or 1,000. Let's go for a long day at the office for 1,000. Ooh, going big. Long day at the office for 1,000. He is the head of the Pleiades of the Azure Sky, a splinter group of the Holy Knights. It's a tough one. Oh, Novich thinks he's got it, though. Novich, who is it? Who is, 
who is Tinta? That's correct. Denzel is the correct answer. I actually, when I came up with the question, I made a mistake. I thought it was Death Pierce, and I looked it up, and I was like, oh, it's actually Denzel. So I was wondering if one of you guys might even say the wrong answer there. But, Novich, you have a commanding lead with 3,400 points. You try and sweep the board with a couple more correct responses here. we got Long Day at the Office for 200 or 400, or someone needs a haircut for 200. Let's go with Long Day at the Office for 400. He is the bodyguard of Veronica, Princess of Leonis. Oh, Sandy. Oh, Veronica. Not Margaret? Nope. He's the he's the bodyguard of Veronica. Who is Grimoire? That's correct. <laughs> uh, we've got two left, Sandy. Both of them for 200. Which one do you want? Little computer issues. Let's do haircut for 200. This commandment's mustache pales in comparison to Escanor's. Sandy. Who is Monsby? That's right. The final one is long day of the office for 200. These two share the job of head of the druids. Is that a hand? I think it is. Sandy. Who are these two people? Who is Zaneri? And, and who who is what's her name? <laughs> One second. You're just teeing up Novage for the steal. Uh who is not I would be so upset. Alright, Novage. I think we're going for Novage for the steal here. Do you know the two druids? I don't, I I, don't remember the second. Oh, Sandy. Remember. Sandy's remembering it. I think there might be an extended time on the timer. Who's the second one? <laughs> uh, so who is Zaneri and who is Jenna? That's right. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to Final Jeopardy. Novich has 3,400 and Sandy has 2,000. So do the quick math in your heads. Decide how much you want to wager. We're going to trust you on this one. The category for Final Jeopardy is the grandest of the grand. Not that it tells you anything. I don't even know why people sometimes say the categories here, especially when they're cryptic like this one. But are you guys ready? Wagers in place. These are the four characters in the game who held the rank of Grandmaster of the Holy Knights of Leonis. And there's four characters we're looking for who've held the rank of of Grand Master of the Holy Knights of Leonis. Now, Novage, we'll go to you first. I, I can't remember who they go to in Jeopardy, if it's the one with the most points or the least, but we'll give Sandy a little extra time to think about it. So, Novage, so, what was your wager? It's going to be uh, Dreyfus. Who is Dreyfus? Who is Hendrickson? Who is Zardus? And the final one would be, who is Hauser? That is correct. How much did you wager, sir? I wagered 1000 1000 Okay. So, Sandy, did you have the same answer? I forgot about Hauser. Ah, he used a sneaky <laughs> one. He slid in at the end there. Yeah. What was your wager? It was 2000 Oh, all the marbles. <laughs> <laughs> so Novich wins 4,400 to nothing. You gotta love Final Jeopardy. Uh, but uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. That was a, a little fun, gripping ending there. I always enjoy those game segments, too. Good job, Novich, on uh, a strong performance. Sandy, you'll get him next time. But thank you, everybody, for joining us at the Board Hat Tavern, a Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross podcast. We stream this show live on our Twitch channel, at twitch.tv slash Borhat Tavern every week. Used to be Monday nights, but I think we're switching to Tuesdays. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Sandy, I know you haven't posted in a while, but where can people find you if they need to figure out how to take down this Akumu boss that's frustrating a lot of people this week? Yeah, there's uh, there's different Akumu strats, apparently, you were telling me about. But uh, youtube.com forward slash Sandy, that's with a double Y, 7DS. 
And if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us anytime at podcast at borehattavern.com or follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Borhat Tavern. Sorry, at, at Borhat Tavern. All three of us are members of the Global Guild Denied. It's part of the Scoundrels Alliance. If you'd like to join our ranks, reach out to us. You can reach us to us on Instagram, Twitter, send us email, mention in the comments. We'll get in touch with you. You can also subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you happen to find your podcast online. We're likely there. You can also find our shows on our website at borhattavern.com. And yeah, that's, that's a story on its own. I'm working on it. We'd like to thank Madeline Marois for crafting our killer logo, Streetwise Rhapsody from YouTube for composing our awesome cover of the Grand Cross theme song that we use for our intro, and Andre Bobet from Art Station from Art Station for letting us use his outstanding 3D renders of the Borhat Tavern for our pre-live and post-video splash screens. You can find all their work at their websites in the description. Everybody, thanks for listening. Have a great week. Bye.